In this video, we are going to take a look at Dart macros. So if you don't know what are Dart macros, it's a revolution in the Dart language. So it is added in Dart 3.4 in the latest Google I.O. And I'm going to explain you how it works and what you can do with the Dart macros. So stay with me. Hi there, this is Iman Neo. Welcome to my channel. So in this channel, we talk about Flutter, we talk about Dart, we talk about game development and software engineering in general. So in this video, we are going to take a look at the Dart macros. So if you don't know what is it, it's a new feature that is experimental and it is introduced in Dart 3.4 in the latest Google I.O. So basically it's a code generation, I would say, but it is not like the code generation that you are familiar with. For example, previously we had JSON serializable and when you wanted to have from JSON and to JSON functions, you had to add this annotation, you had to add this line, part example.g.dart. So you had to add these two lines and after that you had to run the command dart run build runner build so it takes a little time to generate the code for you and basically it adds this file beside the file that you are working with for example if you have example.dart it generates a new file totally new file beside the uh, example.dart file so the g means generated and you have to push the generated file to the repository that you have to the git repository and you know it's frustrating to do a lot of things to just have the to JSON and from JSON methods. In the macros, the Flutter team created the JSON codable macro. So the only thing that you need is the JSON codable annotation. So you just add the annotation on the class that you have and done. So everything is done. You don't need to run any command to generate the code. There is no file. So you don't need to push anything to the uh, Git repository. So it generates some codes under the hood immediately. I mean, when you add the annotation, you are able to access the to JSON and from JSON files immediately. So it generates some codes under the hood on the background and it works very fast. So this way you will have from JSON and to JSON for your object or for your class easily. So let's see how can we use macros in the Dart because it's experimental. We need to change the Flutter or Dart channel that we have. So you need to switch to the Dart dev channel or Flutter master channel. So let's see. Yeah, with Flutter channel, you can see what channel you are in. So I'm on the stable channel. Also, you can open the documentation here. Yeah, it's right here. You can run Flutter channel to see the current channel. And you can write Flutter channel name of your channel to switch to the channel that you want. For example, I can say Flutter channel and I'm going to use the master channel. Okay, now we are switched to the Flutter master channel. We can check it by Flutter channel and yeah so after that we need to run flutter upgrade to make sure that we are on the latest state of the flutter channel and yeah our channel is updated and we are ready to go so let's get back to the documentation here it said that make sure you are using dart version 3.5.0 dash 152 or later so let's see what dart version we are using yeah, it is 350178. So it's newer than this one. So we are good. And then we need to add the constraint in the PowerSpec file. We are going to do it later. And after that, we need to add the JSON dependency. So it's a package. You can find it in the pop dev. Yeah, it's a package that is developed by the Dart team. So basically you need to add the JSON package to be able to use JSON codable annotation here. So after that, you need to add the macros as the experimental feature in your analysis options.yaml. After that, you are ready to go. By the way, when you want to run the app using Dart run or Flutter run, you have to pass this option. It says 
enable experiment equals macros so with this option you say that okay i want to use this experimental feature in my app and then you are done you are able to use json codable annotation so first of all let's create a new flutter project i'm gonna name it flutter test macros Okay, so we have an empty Flutter project. Let me put it here. And let me open the simulator to run it. Yeah, it runs without any issue. So it's the default Flutter application. And I'm gonna remove all the comments. I'm going to remove all of these codes and I'm going to add a simple homepage. And inside that we have a scaffold. And yeah, I like this one. Hello macros. And here I'm gonna use my home page. Okay, now let's add the constraint to the power spec file. So it's here. I'm gonna add it here instead of the default one and yes i think we are ready to go and after that we need to add the package so you can run this command or you can add the package manually i'm going to use the command you can write instead of dart we can write flutter pop add json and yeah as you see it adds the json package and it finds the latest version if you check you see that yes the latest version is 020.1 so it's the same we are using the latest version and now we need to add these lines to the analysis options.yaml file to be able to use dart experimental features so i'm gonna find it it's here and I think I can just put it here and yeah so after that we can import the JSON and also we can run the app using this option so let's create a new class here in the main file we can have class person final string name final int age so in this way we are able to use json codable and if you try to use the to json and from json here for example person one to json yeah you see that you have the to json method and also you have the from json so it generated the code the function for you and so we can check the functionality I'm going to add a sample JSON here. Okay, now I've created a sample JSON. It can be a JSON from your backend or from a file, but in this case, it's a simple JSON a string that I created here and I can use it. So let's say that we have person and from JSON and here we have json decode which gets a string and converts it into the map map of a string to object that this function works with so okay and here i can say hello macros i am myself.name Okay, so let's run it. But before that, uh, here we have configuration and we need to add the additional arguments to the flutter run. It was enable experiment macros. So I'm gonna just copy paste this option here. And when you run the app, yeah you see that it parsed the json and it's my name here and it could generate the code and we could use the from json method here 
By the way, because I'm in the IntelliJ, I cannot command click on this. You know, I can command click on a method or anything to see the definition. But for this case, because it's something new, you cannot do it. But I'm pretty sure that in the VS Code, we can do that. So let me open it in the VS Code. And yeah, as you see, there's an option here, go to augmentation or also here you can click on the from JSON. So both of them open the same file. You see that here it generated a code, it's called augmented class. So the keyword is augment and it adds two methods from JSON and to JSON. It tries to parse the name and also the age. And in the to JSON, it adds the properties to the map, JSON map, and it returns. So it's a new concept called augment that Macros is using to generate some augmentation for the class. And yeah, basically, I can just copy paste this code and let's get back to the IntelliJ. Here, I can just paste the code here and I can remove the JSON codable and let's remove the prefix because prefix is something that is dart core i don't know why they use this prefix but we can remove it to use directly a map and an object here and yeah so basically the code that is generated is something like this it's a new concept called augment it seems it adds some functionalities to the class that you already have and yeah in this case it created the from json and to json and the implementation so the point is that it is it has two parts the first part declared the function so it's external from json and to json and here we have the implementation so let's jump into the details of the json codable let me uncomment it back yeah, if you click on this, you can see that here is a definition of JSON codable and basically it's a macro class. So it's called JSON codable and the point is that it implements class declarations macro and class definition macro. So when you implement these two interfaces, you have to override the build declarations for class and also build definition for class. So basically it adds the top part, the declaration of your function. So in this case, it declares the from JSON and to JSON. And here it adds the implementation or the definition of from JSON and to JSON. And if you take a look, for example, here it is declared from JSON. And you see that it adds the external name of your class dot from JSON and map of a string to object and JSON. So this is exactly the same thing that we have here. It is external person from JSON and this map thing and also the JSON. So let me copy paste this here. And I can move it to the right side and I can open it here. And yeah, as you see, this section is declared the top part. So it is external, which is this one. And we have two spaces before that. You see the two space that we have here. And also we have the class name. It is person here in this case. We have dot from JSON, which is here. And we have map a string object, which is this one. Yeah, it's a map of a string to object. And also we have a space JSON and parentheses and semicolon. So it's here. So basically it generated the code here, the first line of code. And yeah, so the next part is the build definition. It's from this interface class definition macro. And here you have to define the from JSON and to JSON. As you see, we have two parts. The first part is build from JSON. It's a little bit complicated. And we have some checks. For example, here we say if superclass doesn't have the from JSON, it throws an exception. And yeah, so it's a complicated logic. But the point is that here we have a function 
and we call it for all the fields that we have. So here we have a map and we call this function. So here we say that we return the field identifier. It is here, for example, this.name and a space equals a space, which is here. And after that, we have JSON param, which is this one. And here we have these two square brackets that are here and here. And after that, we have the single quotation here. You see that here we have single quotation. And in between, we have the identifier name. For example, in this case, it is name or in the other case, it is age. After that, we have the builder and some other things that are this part. After that, it checks if the superclass has from JSON. It adds the from JSON somewhere. I, I'm not sure where it adds. And yeah, so this is for the from JSON. And let's get back to the here. And for the to JSON, build to JSON, you see that here again, we have a complicated logic. So as you see, we have access to the fields here. So it's all the fields that we have. In the parts, it's added the curly bracket, slash n with this amount of spaces. As you see, it's here, I think it, it's four spaces. We have final JSON equals, which is this one. And we said if superclass has two JSON, add this. Otherwise, add this. So in this case, we have this one. We have a string here. And we have comma. And after that, we have object as a nullable. And after that, we have these characters. Then we have this semicolon. So this is the first line. This code generates the first line. And after that, we have add entry for field, which is an inner function. And we call it for all the fields that we have. So we have a list of fields here. And we map all the fields to the code that we have here. So it runs this code. We have JSON, which is this part. We have field.identifier.name, which is name and age in our case. And after that, we have this part. And then we try to convert the type to JSON. So if it's a primitive type, it tries to put it directly or it has the two JSON. It tries to get the two JSON from the inner object and it puts it here. And after that, it adds the curly bracket here. And yeah, so after that, it adds the last line. It is written JSON as you see here. And after that, it adds the curly bracket here. And then we are done. We say builder.augment function body code from parts and we pass the parts that we created here. So after that, using these two functions that we implemented, you see the JSON codable contains this much of code. So we have a lot of logic here and simply we have declarations for class and definition for class. So we build the top part here and we build the bottom part here and after that it adds the augmented class that is generated under the hood immediately for your object so after that let me remove it yeah so you see that you have access to from json and also to json which returns a map of a string and object so it's a typical to JSON that we have for the uh, models. And the point is that if you look at the file changes, you see that, so these are for iOS part, I'm gonna close it. And here you see that we added the constraint here, we added the JSON package or dependency here, and it's the powerspec.log changes. So it doesn't matter. And here we have the analyzer. We added the experimental feature. And the point is that for our object, there is no additional file. So if you remember in the JSON serializable, there is a new file that is generated beside your file. So in this way, we don't have any new file. We just added the JSON codable annotation. And that's it. You can have the access to the 
from JSON and to JSON easily. You don't need to run any command. And when you add the annotation, it generates the code under the hood immediately. And in the near future, we will have data classes, we will have copy with, so we will have a lot of macros that generate the boilerplate code that we write every day and it's gonna be easier and in the future we can create some samples with the macros for example we can create a comma separated list of parameters as a string using macros so if you are interested in this topic i mean creating some uh, customized macros please let me know in the comments i will read them and maybe in the future i will record a video to explain how to create a new macro so that's it for this video i hope you liked it and don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button and thank you so much stay tuned bye